What's up guys, welcome back to Mikey Yourself. In this week's video, we're throwing some apes on the Cholo. Let's check them out. Damn it. All right, if you didn't know, when I bought this Road King, it came with um, some 10 inch chrome works. Uh, Mini apes. I don't know where the cutoff is for regular apes and mini apes. I don't know. So they're a little bit lower than what I would like them. I wanted a little bit more height. Now, if you remember, or if you saw the video on my uh, soft tail, my fat boy, that one we went from 16 inch apes down to some 12 inch apes and the ride improved significantly. It looked good still, but um, I felt like maybe 12 was a little too small for me. Um, and doing some research on my height, it sounds like the best fit for me is about 14 inch ape hangers. Um, so that's what we're gonna throw on to the uh, Road King. So let's look at the uh, the bar. Here are the bars we're gonna put on. These are um, DNA, I forget, Monster or something like that. Uh, bars, they kind of look similar. I don't know if these would be technically classified as meat hook because they don't have that upward but it, it's 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 a little bit different than a z bar and they are some pretty thick bars so with that though the uh cables all need to be switched out because the 2007 models were like the pre-rushmore stuff you can only get about 10 inches um when you go into apes on this model of bike and i think that's why they went with the tents is because they didn't have to uh, extend any of the cables by doing that. However, I mean, they're completely stretched, all right? Like I am ding, 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 ding. I can play my own you know, favorite song there. The uh, wiring is still got some slack in it. That's not too bad. But the clutch line is gonna be too short. Um, and yeah, so we'll have to do some wiring work, some wiring, some wire work. Uh, to get these other uh, bars on. So let's take a look at the cables and, and everything else. So here's the kit uh, that I bought and I got everything through uh, Dennis Kirk. So the DNA bars and then the cabling kit also was through uh, DNA and I believe this was through, uh, gosh, I can't think of the name of the uh, cable guys. Yeah, I'm not really sure. It's just just as control cable, uh, but it has the uh, new clutch line, new throttle cable, the idle cable. You got a brake setup. Now it comes with the lower, which I don't think we will need to replace, just because we're not changing that um, distance. So I think all we'll need is the extended brake line uh to go from from the the grip to right underneath the kind of the chin we'll say of the uh of the triple tree but one thing that is going to be very vital and important to do is to extend the wires the electrical wires so we'll have to do some pin work which is not a big deal just a couple extra steps and this is kind of unique i guess like yeah so we'll get a little bit more into this as we get closer to doing the cabling but for now we need to start taking apart a lot of stuff in order to get access to all of the plugs and everything else that we need to get access to to be able to pop those bars off of the bike. So I'm gonna go ahead and start tearing down the front of this bike. In order to get those plugs, we gotta pull off the uh, the nacelle essentially. So that means triple the tri-light bar, the passing bar, sorry. Passing light bar is gonna have to come off or disconnected or whatever. Um, we have to take the covers off, I believe. Um, we'll have to take that top little trim off. That's not a big deal. If I can get away with not having to remove the entireness of, great. Um, but we'll see. So, um, yeah, I guess I'm going to go ahead and get cracking on it. And I'll bring it back as soon. Let me get the headlight out and we'll take a look at what's inside to see how much work we could potentially avoid. Uh, and then also need to look at... The change that I want to make which is going to be running these cables through the handlebars 
uh, instead of being outside, if that's going to cause any uh, challenges uh, for me as I kind of work through this process. So let's get that headlight out. Headlights out. So when you remove your headlight, or what I did, is instead of messing around with the bucket, you know, I just undid the screws that hold the bucket in. So that way you don't have to readdress or readjust your headlight. Hopefully when you put it back in, it should all stay, you know, together. But unfortunately, so I can see the cables, you can get to them here. The problem is, is we need to be able to, to pull these out and there's just not enough room. This, this nacelle housing gets in the way. So we are going to have to <clears throat> undo the bolts here on the sides to uh to allow for this thing to come apart so we can take this off and you know so the downside extra work the upside ton of space so simple to do the two bolts there i believe is all that it takes to get them off i don't believe there's anything else holding it on now the other thing i need to consider is the switches on the back side of the nacelle um here so when i get to that point you know, we'll take a look at things but i think all i have to do is unscrew this and push the the switch through and that allow us to go ahead and pull that nacelle out nacelle's off i cut like a zip tie or two i don't know um marked off kind of the uh the auxiliary plugs or whatever those switches i was talking about so i just kind of hit one for passing light and then the other one says aux on it but looking this through now i see why they gave you the or they gave me the the additional brake line what i thought was here would be that screw or that coupler and it's a solid piece so the brake line goes all the way down to this bottom part there and then splits to the two lines that go down to your calipers so unfortunately that means i'm gonna have to take all that apart that means we're gonna have to drain the uh fluid out of the brakes and resurface those so it's a little bit more leg work that will need to be done. That's okay. Uh, I was already anticipating the fact that I'm going to have to drain the um, transmission because we got to take that cover off in order to get to the clutch cable. Um, so it's, it's all part of the, you know, what you get yourself into. <clears throat> None of it is super complicated, but stuff that needs to get done. Now, one thing I didn't account for that I'm going to have to run to Harley for is the gasket for that. So those gaskets are about 15 bucks um, through the dealership. I'm sure you can get it online for a little bit cheaper, but due to timeline, I'll have to pay the extra, you know, two or three dollars that they're going to charge me, but not a big deal. I'm okay with that. We're going to go ahead. I'm going to continue to break these down. So at this point, got the mirrors off. And I'm going to take the grips and stuff off of these bars and then we'll mount up the new bars to take a look at what those are going to look like. Okay, we've got the handlebars off. So we're just a little side by side comparison. And I'm sorry, I haven't pulled the bars out of the plastic yet, but just trying to minimize any opportunities for scratching. They're pretty close. You can see different angle, of course. But uh, yeah, it's, it's four additional inches on it. This is what we're looking like on the King. So, uh, not a whole lot of work, just the screws on the, you know, your hand controls or whatever. Um, I did throw a bag just in case there is a small leak in the uh, master cylinder. So I didn't want that dripping on paint or nothing like that. Um, definitely put a towel down so you don't dent your fender and, and you can let your uh, passing bar light set up there, kind of rest on that. Um, and then of course your uh, handlebar mount. Now I'm not going to change the risers. It's something you can do if you want. You know that is one of the things that is nice. So like if I feel like these aren't tall enough for me, then I can always adjust that by getting a little bit taller riser and adding that in, and that'll bump up that height just a little bit. So maybe instead of saying I don't know 14 inch, maybe I want 15 inch. Then I got that sweet spot of not so you know not so big that it's that the 16 inch apes but i also get you know that little bit more than say a 14 inch if this doesn't work out for me so that said let me clamp the new bars in and we're gonna kind of just prop some stuff up it's getting late in the day so i'll have to pick this up probably the next we got some major progress so the bars are on now 
I still have to do all the cabling. None of that's done. I just wanted to kind of mock this up to make sure it's going to look the way I want it to look, and it does. Um, there's a long ways to go right now. Uh, one of the big changes with these bars is they're going to have the wires or the cables inside of the tubing. My old uh, clockwork or clockwork Chromeworks bars, they were sealed, so they didn't have that ability. So it's just going to look a little bit cleaner. Um, yeah, so when I do that, if you saw my other video on the soft tail when I swatched, swapped out those bars, I just used fishing line and a nut, drop it down and let that kind of come through and then you just pull your wires through the bars in order to do that. Um, I will probably need to take these bars off in order to do that. So yeah, again, just kind of test fitting, make sure everything's cool. But um, yeah, it's, it, it takes a little bit of time. So just know this isn't like a two hour job or at least not for me as an average guy. Maybe you can knock it out that quickly if you're a professional. Um, so just give yourself the time you need to get it done right. Don't rush through it. And know you're gonna have to get involved with fluids because in order to change out that that clutch cable or those brake lines, you gotta you gotta drain the fluids. Um, the other thing is with the um, throttle cable and the idle cable, those go up and underneath the gas tank, so gas tank's gonna have to come off as well, which means you gotta deal with the two tank feed system here. That's kind of a little bit of a pain in the butt um, to deal with sometimes, but yeah, that's just part of. Uh, doing your own work. So I just finished pulling the throttle cables through and on this bike because it has the cruise control um, I had some additional connectors that we had to deal with <clears throat> but there was a clamp here undid that and then I had to pull off the intake in order to access the throttle cables here and then uh, once I got them out then I was able to go ahead and pull those things through so now the question is, and this is something I haven't done any kind of research on, is, is how do I pull these through there? Because they don't just, they seem like there's like a clip or something on there. So I'm going to have to do a little bit of research, figure that out. And as soon as I do, I'll let you all know. But got the throttle cable situation kind of figured out. So um, I'm holding the camera, so it's going to be hard for me to do this to show you. But essentially, you kind of just pull down on it and wiggle it around and uh, eventually it'll pop out so like if you take a look at this one you can kind of see there is a little like retaining clip in there that helps you so once it gets in as you push it in uh, because it is tapered there it'll get you through the hole and then once it goes through passes through the clip opens up a little bit um, but it also looks like it might be tapered on the way back so as you pull and you kind of wiggle you compress that little this little ring there and it allows you to pull it out. So not too bad. The important thing is you want to make sure you also label your cables. So the way I did mine is just with the white paint marker. So I know that this cable here is the one that goes into the inside. So what I mean by inside is that's the, the buttons there um, versus this one. It's a little bit different length. And then as I um, showed you the uh, the this cable here has the uh, connections for, I want to say, I think it's the throttle position or the cable position for the uh, cruise control, but I could be wrong. I don't know. So got to pop this off and we'll find out more. So I'm running my first cable through and this is actually, I thought it was the throttle cable. It's the idle cable. Okay. And so that's the one that goes in front. That's the one with the little spring that goes into this cup. So I've got that spring in. I've already got the ferrule into the uh, slot there and just kind of poked it through here. Uh, it's also the one with the two wires connected to it. So I tagged the front wire as white so that way I knew which one was front versus rear. Um, but this thing is ready to go back into the um, throttle grip assembly or whatever you want to call it. I'm going to do the second cable and I just want to get that kind of ready um, so that way it's just one less thing I got to do for tonight but I also want to be able to put my uh, intake back together 
before I roll this outside. So I'm gonna do the other cable, not a big deal. Again, it's just kind of pushing it through. We'll put that clamp back on and we'll get it hooked on there. So that's super simple. Um, no complexity to it. All right, so doing the, the extension wires, I wanted to kind of point something out. And I, I'm, I'm not gonna essentially show you guys me doing the extension parts because there's actually much, much better videos of how to deep pin it, stuff like that. Um, I will make you aware of a couple of things as we look at the handlebars on the bike uh, around the connectors. But um, I would say, you know, if you're looking to do this, do a deep pin lookup in um, YouTube and you'll find guys who did a great job in uh, deep pinning the, the connectors better than, than I would probably show you. But with the extension wires, so this is what they look like. They have a male and a female end at the end of the wires, and this is what allows you to extend the existing. So basically, what you end up doing is plugging one end to the other, right? And it makes your, your wire extend longer. I'm just using the same wire here because it's just, it's the same thing, right? Now, the thought here is that all you would need to do is do that and then slide your heat shrink over it and this would allow you to secure the connection. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Okay, so the thinking is now you've got a secured connection, you can run your wires wherever. The problem is, is if you're running these wires through the bars, not outside the bars, if you're outside the bars, you'd probably be okay. But if you're inside the bars, as you start to pull and stress that connection point, you know, cause you're fishing it through, right? What's gonna happen is the connection will come undone. So, if you're doing extensions and you're doing them with the intent to run your extension through your bar, I highly, 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 highly recommend that you go through the process of doing hard solder. So that means you would cut the connection off, uh, wire it up, put your flux, do your soldering, and that way you have a solid connection so that as you pull these wires through the bars, they don't separate as easily. Not saying you can't yank a solder apart. I'm just saying it's far better to have a solder that's going to be a much stronger connection and provide you a little bit of durability as you kind of work your, your wires through the handlebars. So just my tip to you all, something to think about. Let's keep going. Bars are back on and uh, the cables run through. So oh, I know this is blocking right now because I had to, I just had to put the cover on for a few, but everything's connected. So we've got the wire extensions in place. And like I said, they're piped through the uh, handlebar itself. I've got this taped up because I didn't want my master cylinder just hanging. Um, same with the cables because I had to move it around. But now at this point, um, what our next step is going to be is we're going to tackle the brake line because we've got to drain the fluid on that. And um, that should be pretty simple to do. That's gonna be this um, bolt there. We've got a bolt that is under here holding the kind of distribution line there that splits off to two. And then one bolt per um, brake cylinder or piston or um, can't think of the word, <laughs> caliper, sorry. Um, so one per brake caliper. And then we just pull those out, swap it out with the new setup. And then we'll have to, of course, service lead the brakes. What we'll probably do is do that and the transmission stuff uh, at the same time. I just want to get it all mounted up. Um, so we'll do that. And then the clutch line will be the last deal. So we got to undo it from the, the grip up there, or not the grip, but the lever. And of course it goes underneath 
and there. I've got to run to Harley to get uh, the gasket for that. So we're going to clean our catch pan really, really well because we're going to reuse the fluid. It's not old fluid. Um, so we'll drain it, pop off that cap, and I'm not sure if we're going to be able to get away with doing it um, without having to remove the exhaust. I think we can. We're going to find out, though. You know, we'll, we'll see. Uh, anyhow, so let's get out the brake lines. I'm going to go ahead and knock that out. And uh, it... Again, nothing special about it. I'm just in doing the line, so we're not going to walk through the process. If you need to see videos on how to service your brakes, I've got one, and there's about a million others on YouTube that you can check out. Um, yeah, so we'll keep on going. Brake lines are in. So we've got the new brake lines on, new uh, brass washers, or yeah. So they come up here, like I said, goes to this uh, mounting point here. So the new distro is in, got that coupler tightened down, so we're good to go there. And it's a little long, so I'm going to have to figure out like what this is going to look like once I get the nacelle on, um, how I've got to route this. I might just need to, to bring the slack across the, uh, the front there and underneath, so that'll be some finagling that needs to be done. But that's on, the lever is semi on, I got to put that casing on, but I've got to get the throttle cable situation squared away first. So we're getting there, man. All right, gang, we're getting close. Got the mirrors on, got the grips back on, cables are all, you know, set up. Now I'll have to still do the fine adjustments up here. Um, so that's why I don't have the boots pushed up. And I decided to flip my mirrors upside down. I kind of like that look. I don't know how well it'll work out with these bars because they are a little bit narrower, maybe. I don't know. You know what? I'm not too sure. I'll have to figure it out, but what I want to make sure I don't run into is a situation where I'm staring at my armpit in the mirror. Been there, done that. So we're going to we're gonna do a little bit of moment of truth here. Um, we may get an error thrown at us because I don't have the um, headlight plugged in or the passing lights. So it may say we'll get an error code or something like that. But ultimately, what we want to do is we want to make sure that the buttons here, for the most part, uh, still work so let's try it out okay that's a good sign horn all right let's see if we get the high low beam indicator yep we got that there left signal and cruise so we got that so that seems to be good to go I didn't disconnect my uh, air ride switch so I'm not worried about that um, for this side, uh, well, we can't test this area here, but what we can do is definitely test our right blinker. This should trigger our fill pump. Fill pump is running. We'll just give it a quick bump. Starter kicked. So we're solid, man. So good deal. I didn't, uh, I didn't screw it up. Um, so now we're at the point where we essentially can start reassembling the front end and focus in on getting the clutch cable installed. So I've already got that disconnected from the, um, from the lever. And now we just need to cut some zip ties, drain the fluid there, but I got to clean out my catch pan first and uh, get that gasket. So I'm going to run and go get that gasket now. And we'll be able to knock this thing out probably in about another hour or so. We'll see how it goes. So I hit my first, I don't want to say snag. It was probably, it's more of I wasn't expecting to do this. So the only other bike I've swapped the clutch cable on was my soft tail. And I was able to access the panel without having to take off the exhaust if I remember correctly. It's been a while. So, maybe I didn't, I just don't remember. But, unfortunately, to get to these lower bolts there, and this guy back in there, this is going to have to come off. So, I'm in the process of pulling that off. We'll be able to access that cover. Pop that off. Already got our uh, gasket, so we're ready to go there. Got my catch can. So, uh, yeah, it's just a matter of getting this thing off. Um, 
one of the things I definitely did was threw some WD-40 on the bolts because they look kind of rusted. So I don't want those breaking off on me. I want to let those soak really, really well. And that way they're easy to come off. So I'm going to continue to work at getting this off and then I'll bring you back. Okay, we're almost 100% back together. So I've done the, I've bled the brakes. Um, now I'll tell you the routing of the cables. I'm not sold on how I routed them. So I may have to go back and revisit this in the future um, to reroute them. I'm not sure. I got to do some research and see how other people routed their cables. But I kind of don't like going through this spot here, which is where things were routed to before. I don't know. I'm just not sold. We'll see. Um, the, the tricky part really is not so much the throttle and the idle cable. That's pretty straightforward. That's They're big enough where if I wanted to, I could bring them out here. Um, in front of the headlight, but the brake line because it pokes up straight up It wouldn't be able to I mean, it's like here. So it either has to go back So it would have to go, you know behind this and come up um, or Like I have it so I don't know man like It's one of those things right you got to figure it out um, We'll see what happens. So all that's left is some minor stuff. I've got to put my mirrors on or I tighten them down and then uh, also throw my uh, um, trim ring on there and that's it it'll be a startup and we'll take a look at how the road king looks with the new apes so here's our finished product We've got the bars on and looks really good I like it very happy with the way it came out um, when I did do the cover there, there was some fluid, of course, that dripped out, so I got her neat. So I got to wash that, make sure everything's good to go. So you always want to double check, make sure you don't have any leaks. Same thing with your brake lines, all that kind of stuff. So I've got to give it a wash down, but however, it's raining in California today, so that's going to have to wait. But uh, yeah, I think it looks good. So the next thing to do will be to ride it and see how comfortable it is. A um, lot more modifications coming up for the Road King. So stay tuned. I appreciate you watching this video. If you enjoyed it, hit that thumbs up. If you enjoy the content, become a subscriber. And until my next video post, I hope to see you in the wind.